We are. Richard uh, Burnett is the Chief Executive of the Road Haulage Association and no doubt a very busy man this morning. So first off, thank you for your time, Richard. I, I'm not entirely sure where to start. If, if I was currently, if I'd set off on Saturday to make a delivery to continental Europe and I'd ended up in the tail back at Dover, what would I be looking at over the next few days, do you think? <laughs> Well, if you've come from Europe into the UK, is that your question, James? No, if, I, if, I, if I'm in a lorry now in Kent, yeah. what, what does the immediate future look like? Well, I mean, if you're a lorry in Kent, you're going to be stuck there for at least 48 hours as it stands at the moment. I know there is so there's some rumour uh, that's, that's, that's sort of filtering around to say that you know we might find a res resolution to this really quickly. But at the moment, if you're stuck in that queue for 48 hours, it's going to be pretty miserable you know government we're, we're working towards uh you know re resolving truck parking and and, and 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 putting facilities in place but those plans were for for january not for now they're having to bring those plans forward and you know at the moment they're actually rolling out uh, additional truck parking spaces potentially in manston for four thousand trucks on the m20 there's potentially going to be two thousand trucks uh you know and, and i guess our concern is about facilities driver welfare uh, you know hot food sufficient elements for those drivers while they're waiting if they're stuck there for two days and uh, that's going to be a significant issue for them and i come in crikey it's, 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 i don't think i've ever felt less christmasy on the 21st of december but it seems to me as an amateur that the next problem will be the fact that if i was a french or a Lithuanian or a, or, a, or a Belgian truck driver with a load that is destined for the UK, the last thing I'd want to do is drive here because I've got no idea whether I'll ever get out again. James, that's, that, that's exactly the problem that oh we're facing God. at the moment. You know, they don't want to be stranded here before Christmas. Uh, you know, if they come into the UK today, then they're going to have to join this queue, uh, you know, over the next sort of 48 hours. Um, so, so what we're hearing more and more at the moment is, is a lot of EU drivers... Uh, and hauliers from from Europe are refusing to come to the UK. Don't want to come to the UK, uh, and that's going to create uh, a challenge for us if if they don't come. You know, we may well see a shortage of fresh pro produce. You know, we've seen a lot of stock building already for ambient product for transition. So I think the retailers are well stocked with ambient product, but that that short shelf life life uh, chilled product, uh, you know, is likely to be uh, you know uh, under pressure getting that into the UK. And probably would have been anyway, come January the 1st, in the absence of uh, a negotiated settlement. But yeah. the coronavirus is like the mother of all magnifying glasses, really, isn't it? Well, well look, it, it definitely is. And I think whether we have a deal or, or not, there is still going to be significant challenges in terms of, you know, both inbound product from Europe, but, but UK exports because of the declarations that we're going to have to complete, the paperwork that, we're, you know, we're going to have to complete. And the fact that businesses both in, you know, the UK and Europe simply aren't ready for this transitional, transitional process that we're going to go through. So, yeah, lots of challenges, but this week is probably not what any of us expected in terms no. of uh, this, this, this kind of issue. Um, I, I don't know where you are comfortable treading, but I'll ask you, you don't have to answer it. <laughs> do, do you feel the French are acting unreasonably I, I, within the context of us threatening to stick gunboats in the English Channel just one short week ago? Mm, well, you know, look, look. I, I think we're in the middle of a negotiation. Yes. We're also trying to, you know, I, I guess stop the spread of a new, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I, I guess mutated virus, you know, the, 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 co the COVID strain that, that, that's that's taking hold, it, it's, it's moving pretty rapidly. But what I would say, James, is that we've done a really good job over the last nine, ten months uh, of actually keeping critical freight moving. Drivers, you know, are remote by the very nature of the fact that they're sitting in their cabs, they're socially distanced when they when they tip and reload. Uh, and we've managed that really successfully. So, so, you know, I would put into question the timing of this. Mm. Uh, you know, bearing in mind, there's also been reports that this, this, this strand has been around certainly since September, possibly even earlier, you know, in which case uh, the timing of this, you know, like I said, d does come into question. Um, you, did, you spoke to Grant Shapps last night, I think. Did you raise that point with him, the, the timing question? And it, the... Well, I guess it's it's something that I've kind of raised with government over the last, over the last sort of 12, 12, 15 hours as we've been yes. having constant conversations. Um, I'm not saying that, that there is any response that would come back from that, but, but I think, you know, We've been so heavily involved in these in these in these kind of negotiations and, and conversations around what is happening. Um, it would be wrong to think that that you know 
at the moment talks are not breaking through are they we're getting ever closer to the year end where transition has to happen uh and this is probably no better way of actually putting pressure on and demonstrating the true impact of uh you know uh, of what may happen and it also demonstrates that perhaps we're not in control of our borders in the way in which we think we are God forbid. Uh, Richard Burnett, the Chief Executive of the Road Haulage Association, many thanks for your time. And I, I don't know if I've ever ended an interview by saying good luck, but I'm going to. Good luck.